Ford, Chow, Tory, Stintz, Soknacki, and now we add one more name to the list. Baskin, as in Morgan Baskin, who is running for mayor of Toronto, and she's 18. And we welcome you to our studio. Thanks. It's very exciting to be here. I'm going to ask you the same question I'm going to ask all the candidates. Awesome. Why do you want to run for mayor? Because I think I can do it, honestly. Um, and I think I'm different. I think I have a lot of different things to say that no one else is saying. And I'm here to say them. Like what? <laughs> like, I think we need to actually care for the people who live here. Not talk about just saving the money, which is important, um, but the city's not a business. Um, but also talk about real public transit and not arguing about it, but actually really deciding, saying yes, and figuring out where the money's coming from. This city council has made a lot of different decisions about transit in the last few years. Yeah. Did that offend you? It didn't offend me, but I think at some point we need to pick a plan and stick to it. Enough of this flip-flopping at the end of the day, it means we waste money. You know, we start building things and then we stop and we make another decision and then we have to come back and tear things out and build new things and we just need to build it. It's been 30 years, basically, since we've added public transit. We need to add real public transit now. Do you take transit? Every day. To school? I walk to school now, but I used to take public transit 40 minutes every day for school for four years. So you have first-hand knowledge about how well or not well it's working. I do, and so do most of the high school <laughs> students I know. We're super invested in public transit because we're the people who take it every single day. Uh, are you even allowed to run for mayor? You'll forgive that question. <laughs> like, are you old enough to run for mayor? Yeah, I double-checked, of course, um, and I had to file my papers. Um, so yes, you have to be 18, you have to be a resident, you have to pay $200 and fill out your form. And you paid the 200 bucks? I did. Where'd you get the 200 bucks from? I saved babysitting money. No kidding. Yeah. Good for you. Uh, I don't have to tell you that a lot of people are wondering how an 18-year-old thinks she can run the city. So where do you get off thinking you can run the city? <laughs> well, where I get off thinking I can run the city is that, honestly, I think I've got things to say that everyone else isn't. I think that I'm here to say I'm a fresh perspective. I'm someone who's willing to go in and actually admit when I don't know and not make up something or give a line or avoid the question but say, I don't know. Let's ask some people who know and then let's make a decision. Um, I'm here to say those things and I think we really need someone who's in charge of our city who's willing to be a uniter and not a divider and who's willing to say, okay, let's figure it out together, not blah, 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 important things, stuff which is a lot of what I hear from politicians. And I don't, I don't think that's how we should run a city, by telling people what they want to hear. We need to tell people the truth. You're in grade 12? I'm doing a victory lap. So technically I'm graduated, but I'm doing some extra classes. OK. Uh, your contemporaries at school, mm -hmm. your friends, Yeah. what do they think of this? Everyone thinks it's awesome. Um, I think they're finally ready to hear. I don't think they're finally ready, but I think they're finally hearing a young voice. Someone who's saying, I'm not just telling you you matter, you matter, I'm showing you you matter. You know that people your age don't vote. I do. I mean, that's a big problem, right? I mean, you it might, is. You, 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 you might do better than you will end up doing if people your age, never oh. mind ran for office, but just got off their you know what's and voted. Why don't they vote? Why don't they vote? I th my answer to that is they don't feel important. Um, and I think they don't feel like they have a say that matters. They don't feel like anyone cares about what they say. They feel like the message they're getting is lip service and it's just words because for the most part, it is. Hmm. And if we tell them that they're important, that their futures matter, and that they're the leaders of today and not the leaders of tomorrow, they'll vote because they have, they have something to say. Have you run for anything before? <laughs> um, you know, like school president or yeah. student body president or whatever? No, I mostly avoided school politics, mostly because um, administration, um, kind of like the Ontarian federal government, Suda, Municipal politics kind of shuts us down. Um, it's like, oh, you can plan a dance, have fun. Um, and I wasn't really interested in that. Um, municipal politics really took my fancy and my passion, and so I'm going for that. Okay, it costs, I think, about a million bucks to run for mayor. <laughs> I'm assuming you don't have that kind of money. Uh, no, as of yet, no. But I think it's also important to note that who can raise $1.3 million in eight months is not a representation of who lives here. Um, for the most part, the people who live here could not even fathom raising that amount of money. Um, and so I think it's important to me that I don't talk about that kind of money.
that I keep it grassroots. How did you get interested in politics to begin with? Um, I think I've, I don't remember a time when I wasn't interested in politics. Um, I'm involved in scouting really heavily, and that's a really big service organization, much like the city is, and that's always been really interesting to me. And I'm, I'm in a pretty involved family, not necessarily politically, but involved in communities and involved in the city. So, Have you volunteered on political campaigns in the past? Um, not political campaigns, and I'm trying to kind of keep myself out of party politics. We don't have parties at the municipal level for a reason, and I'm coming without political baggage, so I don't want to create any. Um, but I did volunteer in city council last semester for school. There's something kind of, um, you're reaching for the brass ring on the first shot out the door. Did yeah. you think maybe you might want to run for trustee or even counselor before you run for mayor? To be honest, um, no. Um, they were, it's something that I've heard a lot, especially since I filed, but those are all really local. And I, I, I mean, I love my neighborhood, I like my ward, and those things are important, but that wasn't where my views were. I was, I was really interested in healing, starting to heal the urban-suburban divide. I was interested in public transit, and I am interested in those things. And those are big picture issues. Those are mayoral issues. Those are uniter issues, not ward issues. Have you thought about Morgan Baskin at the age of 40, when, who knows, she may be married and have a couple of kids, mm -hmm looking back all those years in the past at Morgan Baskin, the 18-year-old, and what, sh what your 40-year-old self might think of your 18-year-old self's doing this. I hope my 40-year-old self would be proud, and I hope my 40-year-old self will use the skills that I learned for the next few months to her advantage, um, and know she probably doesn't have the time at 40. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are you, do you plan to campaign? Yeah, how definitely. Do, how do you plan to campaign? Um, I want to do interesting things and fun things. I think this city, and particularly young people, react to joy a lot. And so I want to ride this, each subway line from end to end and talk to everybody. I want to go hang out in coffee shops and talk to people. I want to hang out on street corners. I want to visit people. I want to be involved in events. I want to do all that kind of stuff that I plan to do, honestly, before the media storm that has been the last few days started. Do you plan to hire a a real campaign manager as opposed to, I don't know if you've got a parent or a sibling running My cat's a campaign. kind of doing it right now. Your cat, <laughs> okay. No, but I mean, probably not. It'll probably be a campaign run on volunteers, honestly, because I probably won't have the money. Um, but I do plan to run a real campaign, um, whatever that looks like to me as the, as the months go on. Um, it won't be traditional in the sense of what other, ca other candidates' campaigns will look like. Um, but it will be real and it will be honest and hopefully it'll continue to be big. You know, one of the ways to get on the map in a mayoralty campaign is to get to participate in the all candidates debates yeah. that take place. And of course, the names I mentioned off the top, you know, those five will be invited to all the debates. Yeah. Have you thought about how you're going to convince them or organizers of debates how to get you included so that you can play as well? I haven't. I sure hope they do, but I think for the most part my plan is to continue saying intelligent and different things and being another perspective. And as long as I continue to be that and not turn into somebody else and, and somebody that I'm not, which I don't foresee happening, um, hopefully they'll see me and invite me. Are you right to the finish line here? Yes, like definitely. From, so from October 27th. So this is, this, is your, this is your life for the next six months? Yeah. Day and night. Yes, day you know, and you night. You know what's required, eh? I, mean, I, I do. I've spent the last three days putting in 16-hour work days. Are you knocking on doors? No, right now. I mean, I've been doing interviews for the most part. The media has been a full-time job right now. And I'm sure that will die down and I can do more fun things like door knocking. Could you characterize how you think the current mayor of Toronto has done in the three and a half years he's had the job? Um, I don't think it's all been bad, which is what a lot of people have said. Um, but I also think that the more lies you tell, the less credibility you have. And I think a lot of lies have been told to the people who live here because it's what they want to hear. And we need to not just say to people what they want to hear. We need to say, this is the truth, and explain the whys and hows, and not give one-liners. When Rob Ford's personal issues became public, mm -hmm. Uh, how did that play in among the folks you hang out with? I mean, it was a sensation, just like it's been for the rest of the city. It was just as much of a sensation within young people, for sure. Did any of your friends say, hey, isn't that cool? We got a marrow smokes crack. Not really, no. <laughs> 
I didn't. I have not heard that from anyone. So they're not impressed with that. No, I mean he runs our city. Do you know any of the other candidates? Not personally. No. The major candidates? I mean, I know their names for sure, and I, I'm born and raised Torontonian, so their names I know, but I don't. I don't know them personally. Hmm. Uh, if you weren't running in the race, who would you vote for? That's a hard question. I don't know. I probably wouldn't decide until October 27th, to be honest. And what happens after, I, I, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but you, you might not win. I know. You might it's not. It's a possibility. It's a possibility. So what do you do? You're now on the victory lap, right? So what happens mm -hmm. on the, uh, the 28th of October? What, what do you do then? Uh, probably get some sleep, first and foremost. Yes. Get some sleep and some regular meals. After that, we'll see. I'm really into um, redefining success. And, you know, I want to do cool things and I want to have great experiences and explore the world. And we'll see what that looks like, whether it's au pairing in France, maybe, or getting a real job, as some people have referred to it. Um, we'll see. Or maybe continuing in a political capacity in some way. Any interest in post-secondary education? Uh, maybe, but probably not till the following fall. Um, I don't know what I want to study. Um, I knew more that I cared about the city than I knew what I wanted to study, um, to be honest. And 200 bucks was a lot less than the 10,000 that it would have cost me to do first year university. So. Well, of course, I'm scrupulously neutral and have no views on this. But, but uh, can I just say how impressed I am that you're doing this? And, Thank you. Um, and I wish we had about a million more like you. So good luck. I wish we did too. Thank you. It means a lot. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at TVO.org.